Ah! Drugs! Everyone knows that all a vampire truly needs is an obscene amount of drugs. Now where the fuck is this owner of said wallet? It's not him. I am it's about to have a right. goddamn aneurysm. Are you the owner of the owner of the wallet? Good evening, Doctor Strickland. And good you are not. To you, I Dr. just Reed. spoke to you. Can I be of any help? Goodbye, Doctor Strickland. Four? What is this four? I is confused. Not now. All right, fine, Swansea. How fucking dare you? How dare the owner of this wallet not come forward and speak to me? This is getting fucking irritating. Where? I cannot enter. Damn it. Who are Good you? Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swansea's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. An overrated dabbler? Ho ho! Tell me, Waverly, what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. Uh-huh. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. Evidently you are. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. Other people may say that's too conservative a point of view. Conservative? And what are you going to say to Mr. Fiddick if he loses his arm because of the operation? Because that's what's going to happen if the surgery is a failure. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Ackroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. There is no need uh -huh. for such animosity between us. 
Don't you think the epidemic is already enough to deal with? What that the f is one point we could like. agree on. And that is precisely why I want to be sure that you will be of help to this hospital instead of a burden. Why would you not like if if this guy is a fucking doctor to begin with? Since your tenure in this hospital this is longer than mine, perhaps you can Why tell would me you more naturally about assume? Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Uh-huh. Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Well, yeah, sure, but... I mean... What experimentation is is b basically mandatory in any scientific endeavor. Like most medical, most scientific advances in general were discovered by accident. What the fuck are you talking about? Of course, you fucking freak. I don't know what you've heard about me. But I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Aykroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. What? Knowledge has always been and will remain our main weapon, and it has always come at a price. And personal initiative. It is not a question of initiative, it is a question of integrity. These men and women have put their faith in us, Dr. Reed. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Ackroyd. Sure. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Will this shift never end? Okay. I need to figure out where the fuck the owner of this wallet is so I can end this goddamn video because I'm at an hour. Dr. Edgar Swansea. How long must I wait, damn what can I do for you, Doctor? Thank you, Nurse Crane. Kindly apologize when you're feeling better. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Damn it. Can I be Let me go. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Down, my boy. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are yep. you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable, and your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Hmm. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Fiddick. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed, so I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter, and a good one too. 
But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Tell me about the doctors who are... Both arms to feed your family, huh? Strickland and Aykroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. <laughs> Differences are disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. <laughs> How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. Oh, snap. You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick. Unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself. But I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, Doctor. I mean, they could eat each other. Tell me more about the death of your wife, Harvey. 1915. I was in the army. Building workshops for the Royal Flying Corps. Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. I just know that I'm all that me kids have. Poor little bleeders. How are your children <laughs> after losing their mother? They were smaller then. The only good thing about this is my Ellen didn't bring them with her that night. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. My sweet girl. Reads me like a book. Ha!